All right, let's talk about the Eurozone crisis. Yes, we do have to. <laughs> well, because it's the news, that's why. Come on, don't be like that. We'll make it fun. We'll, we'll learn, we'll think. Maybe we'll even laugh a little. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's theoretically possible, that's what I'm saying. But, all right, I'll tell you what, we'll do one silly story just to limber up, and then we've got to buckle down and talk about the Spanish banking sector, okay? OK. So, yesterday, the Press Association reported the following story. Police in the Forest of Dean are looking for a man who has been seen doing star jumps dressed as a smurf. <laughs> well, of course they are. Uh, who, who wouldn't be? Apparently, this rogue smurf runs up to women doing star jumps, and the police are concerned this might be a come-on. <laughs> really? A come-on? Offhand, I, I don't think I can think of a more ridiculous or unwanted approach any man might make to any woman. Yesterday, David Cameron flew to Berlin to give Angela Merkel his opinion on the Eurozone crisis. <laughs> David, hello. I was worried that since you're not in the Eurozone and you refused to sign that fiscal compact in January, you might not feel able to share your important opinions anymore. <laughs> no, that doesn't worry you. Okay, good, yeah. So Eurobonds, oh, you think, right? Okay, hang on, let me just write this down in my special invisible notebook. Yeah. <laughs> You see, the thing is, Cameron advocates Eurobonds because they spread borrowing risk equally. But, um, no, hang on. Look, I tell you what, here is an analogy. And not just any analogy. John is about to attempt to break the record for the longest, the most tortuous, and yet simultaneously the most oversimplistic analogy in now show history. So, a German, a Spaniard, and a Greek walk into a restaurant. He's off. <laughs> Along with an Irishman, a Frenchman, a Cypriot, and, and you get the idea. But not the Englishman. They had a row about spicy food, so he refused to come. <laughs> anyway, they don't want to get too drunk or spend too much money, so they make some ground rules. OK, guys, just one drink each per course and no one order lobster, OK? <laughs> By which I mean the agreement that each country would limit borrowing to 3%. See, I told you this would be fun. <laughs> And so the dinner began, and everyone had a lot of fun. But the different diners had different approaches to the rule they'd made. Some bent the rules a little bit, like, perhaps surprisingly, Germany. OK, maybe a couple of extra beers, but I have prudently lined my stomach with cabbage and potatoes. <laughs> By which I mean Germany's solid manufacturing base. Some stuck to it quite strictly, like, again, perhaps surprisingly, Spain. No, 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 no more for me, gracias, because you see, we have made this agreement and we are not allowed to... Uh... And then, in a class of his own... There was Greece, who wasn't so much drinking wine under his coat as dancing on the bar, downing a yard of ouzo and wearing a lobster as a hat. <laughs> but eventually, of course, the dinner ended and the bill arrived, by which I mean the financial crisis of 2008. And with it came the hangovers. OK, so everyone pays for what they had, yeah? Hey, guys, the funny thing you're going to love. <laughs> I seem to have uh, come without my wallet. <laughs> Would you look at that there, Stolhavoy? <laughs> so the country's uh, people, whatever, who had brought their wallets had no choice but to lend the others some money or everyone would get kicked out of the restaurant, by which I mean the euro would collapse. OK, fine, but only if you all drink a pot of black coffee. By which I mean strict austerity measures. But the coffee just gets added to the bill, by which I mean the austerity measures restrict growth, and so Germany has to shell out again. And, of course, some austerity measures were harsher than others. OK, Greece. Wake up! You need to take this coffee! But there's six gallons of it. That's right. Well, OK. No, 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 as an enema. <laughs> and, and so now Greece isn't sure it's worth it. Well, ma maybe I'll just skip out of the restaurant without paying. By which I mean default and leave the Eurozone. I tell you what, I have a little think. By which I mean hold elections. <laughs> and then I'll let you know whether I want to stay here but take off the enema or skip restaurant but have to survive on cat food. Return to the drachma. <laughs> And while he's doing that, poor old Spain, who you remember stuck strictly to the rules, has discovered that nonetheless its private individuals and corporations have borrowed so much during the booms so that the banks can now no longer handle the debt. And what is that in the metaphor, John? That. In, in, uh, that is... I'll tell you what it is. Come on, quickly. It, uh, it's vodka jelly. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, I've just did on the 12 of these little jelly things. I think there might have been some booze in them. 
So now Spain needs to borrow some cash too, but Germany's had enough of this. Am I the only one who bought their wallet? Which is why Britain turned up yesterday. Uh, hello, yes, yeah, sorry to intrude, not of my business really, but I've been getting drunk in a different restaurant, and, um... <laughs> And, and I, I'm, I'm worried that if you get chucked out of yours, then I'll get chucked out of mine. So I thought I might pop over and give you some advice. Oh, great. <laughs> Why are you dressed like a smurf? Don't know. Anyway. <laughs> My idea is, why don't you just split the bill equally? Introduce Euro bonds. No, that's not fair. I didn't have the tapas or the Slovakia or whatever dish Portugal is famous for. The only way I'll agree to split the bill is if from now on, any time we eat out, I get to choose the restaurant, order the meals and hold everybody's wallets. Introduce closer fiscal union. <laughs> no way. Last time you picked a restaurant, you took us to that horrible place we all ate. World War II. <laughs> Well, if you're going to bring that up every time. And so now it's three o'clock in the morning. Greece has locked himself in the loo, already has one leg out the window. The bouncer is about to throw Spain out unless someone pays for his vodka jelly. And France, brilliantly, has this week reduced its retirement age from 62 to 60, basically saying... Well, we are waiting. I think I'll have a bottle of champagne. <laughs> and Britain... Britain stands in the doorway, watching the mayhem. On the one hand, glad he's not part of it, but on the other, knowing it's desperately important to him how it's resolved and unable to do anything to get anyone to pay him any attention except... Star jumps. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> 